Today I'm gonna show you guys the most valuable pair of sneakers in my shoe collection. I have been collecting sneakers for over 15 years now and have owned well over a thousand pairs of shoes throughout the years. And now that I'm on YouTube, a lot of people ask me, DJ, what are your most expensive shoes? As some of you know, I'm from Oregon, so typically people see Oregon Duck PEs and they think these are my most valuable shoes. But guess what? They're not. Neither are my Air Jordan 6 UNC PEs or my Swarovski Crystal Nike Dunk SBs that I wore to my wedding. Some people may think it's the Ray Allen 12s, my first ever PE in my collection or the off-white Chicago one. This is a $10,000 shoe. And some people even think it's the Red October that I wore to my college graduation. But guess what? These ain't it either. So that was just a small glimpse of what is inside my sneaker collection. But if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA show. Hey! On this channel, I love talking about sneakers and helping people grow their collections and turning that hobby into a full-time hustle. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing and joining the fam. We're on the road to a million subscribers and you could be the next one to get us there. As most of the DNA fam knows, we always talk about the history first before we crack open the box and show the shoes. So you know what that means. Let's take it back to 2013 when I first purchased this shoe. I'll never forget this time because I had just moved from Boston. I was going to college out there playing football and I decided to transfer to Foothill College in the Bay to play one JUCO season and then go get a D1 scholarship. I had moved out there to live with my friends and we were all some of the best athletes on the team. So we literally did everything together to hold each other to a higher standard so that way we could all advance to go to get D1 scholarships. And I'm sure at this point in the video, you're probably asking me the question, DJ, why are you telling me about this? I'm trying to give you guys a little bit of context to let you guys know where I was at in life and how the shoe came about. And then hopefully you can see why the shoe shot up so much in value. So during that time, we had a lot of sneakers releasing and Jordan brand honestly wasn't doing their thing. There were a lot of terrible releases good colorways, but the quality just wasn't there. This was the era of Nike basketball doing its thing with Kobe, LeBron, and KD, and especially with the Penny Hardaways that were popping up on the scene, a lot of dope colorways. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more context of me and the sneakers that were coming out during that era, and obviously everything that you saw through the photos that I popped up. Now this pair of shoes in particular, Oh my gosh, I can't believe how much these things are worth. It's crazy to this day to even think about it. And I'm excited to open up this box because I've never shown you guys these shoes before and I've never been able to tell my story about how I got these shoes and all the other stuff. So now it's time to crack this box open. So as you can see right here, you have an all over Nike sportswear box. There's no label on it because this was actually an older sample box. So it just has some scribbling on here. And I used this as a replacement box because I ended up getting rid of the box of these when I first got them because I used to actually wear these. And then these things went up crazy in value and I'm gonna tell you why. As you can see, we have the box open. Let's look at the shoes. This right here is the triple black Nike Zoom Revis trainer. Now I'm sure a lot of you are very confused on how this could be the most valuable sneaker in my collection. I'm gonna tell you. Like I said earlier, 2013 was a transitional year for me pursuing my D1 scholarship coming from a high level D2 school out in Boston. I'll never forget when I moved back home from Boston for a split second just to pack my stuff up to move to Cali. I went to the Nike employee store and I picked up this pair of shoes right here. Retail on them was like 130 bucks or something like that. And I I ended up getting them at the ES, so that means they were only like 60 bucks or something. I don't remember exactly what the price was, but that doesn't even matter right now. Soon as I got this shoe, I put these on my feet and I was wearing these every single day. I used to train in them. I used to wear them for leisure. I just love this shoe. I low key should have bought two pairs of them. Shortly after purchasing these, I moved down to the Bay and I wore these to practice every single day on my way to the gym. And then obviously not at practice on the field, but walking to the field and then coming from the locker room and everything like that. So why does any of this even matter? Today is May 28th and on this day, was the day that I was wearing these shoes when I almost lost my life. Now I'm gonna tell you guys this story based off of what I remember and what the doctors told me after the accident. It was another ordinary day and we were on our way to football practice like typical, you know me, running late, making my PB&J, had to hop in the car because everybody else is waiting for me and it's time to go. Like I said earlier, I was living at my friend's house when I moved to the Bay, so all five of us rode together every single day to practice. During this time, I was still running my business, selling shoes online, going to class, playing football, and I remember taking a phone call as we left the house, so I was on the phone for the majority time of the ride, and no, I was not the driver, I was in the back passenger seat of the car. I'll never forget being on the phone with my friends over at Dunk Exchange, for all my OGs out there going to Dunk Exchange, 
games used to be really, really fun and it used to be really popping as well. So I was booking my table, making sure I was set for the following month because I had planned on setting up a booth and I was on the phone with them, making sure everything was a-okay and paid for. As we were in the middle of the conversation, a car was coming from the right side. We were merging over from the left side on the fast lane because we're getting close to our exit. And I remember seeing the car really, really close to me right here and I immediately just dropped the phone, grabbed the handle and I said, oh sh from that point, the whole screen went black. I don't remember anything for at least a few months of my life. And at this point, I'm gonna tell you guys stories from things that were told to me based off of what happened. The driver of the car that I was in didn't see the car on the right. It must've been in a blind spot and it was a complete accident. So he overcompensated back to the left, which then caused the SUV that we were in to teeter totter because it was overcompensating, which turned the wheel. After the car teeter tottered, it then rolled down the freeway, flipping about five to seven times. It was a single car accident and he didn't hit the car on the side of him as he tried to veer away from him. As the car was tumbling down the freeway, my friend in the seat behind the driver's seat didn't have his seat belt on and he flew through the sunroof and was over a hundred feet away from the car after the car stopped flipping. Later I was told after the car stopped flipping, I hopped out of the car and I went to walk down the freeway and I collapsed and fell in the middle of the freeway with my head like this and my eyes rolled to the back of my head. During this whole process, I was wearing this pair of sneakers right here. After the car stopped flipping and I got out of the car, I only had one shoe on my feet. I don't know how it happened, but my left foot got really messed up and my shoe must've came off during that process and it looked like I stuck my foot in a blender. My other shoe and cell phone was somewhere on the freeway and it was actually crazy because they found my cell phone and they brought it to the hospital to me a couple of days later. And that is something that I do remember now. At least I think I remember it because I remember them telling me about that over and over again. Like you was looking for your phone and so many people were calling you and all that stuff. But anyways, back to the story. So I collapse on the freeway i'm covered in blood all over my face my eyebrow is cut open my ear is split at the top end and i have three big gashes in my back one of our football coaches was also on his way to practice and he was on the same freeway because that's naturally where you go to get to the school he ended up actually being just behind us on the freeway without even knowing and when he saw the accident he realized it was all of his players on the freeway. So he hopped out of the car to make sure that we were all okay and that the ambulance was coming soon. By the time that the ambulance got there, they found that me and the guy that flew out of the sunroof had some of the most damage and we had to be rushed to the hospital immediately. Obviously, everybody in the accident did have to go to the hospital, but we had different traumas and because of our brain injuries and the things that happened to us, we were separated and all at different hospitals. So I end up at the hospital. I'm really bad. I have short-term memory loss. I can't do anything. I can't function. I'm basically like a vegetable. My parents immediately fly out as soon as they hear about the accident and they're sitting in there with me at the hospital hoping that I'll be okay. I needed help with literally everything. I needed help going to the bathroom. I needed help brushing my teeth. I needed help with everything. And my parents, my parents were there for me. And I, <laughs> and I love them and I thank them. And I love them and I thank them so much for always being there for me. This is why, this is why I've had a hard time making this video. This is why I had a hard time making this video because I wanted to tell this story about these pair of shoes right here. Every time I look at this pair of shoes, no matter how much the value is of all these shoes in my room, all this stuff I have, all this stuff I have, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Some of the cheapest shoes in my collection mean the most to me. And I'm thankful that I can tell this story, that I can show you my favorite pair of shoes. The shoes that I don't care about the dollar value. It doesn't matter. There's more to all of this stuff. And it sucks sometimes seeing 
this hype and all this stuff. And I get it. I love this stuff too. I love sneakers so much. But when I think about my favorite shoes, it's about it's about the sentimental value. It's about what the shoes mean to me. And all these shoes have their own meanings. Some may be less than others. It can be a small story. It can be a big story. It can be a short story. It can be a long story. It doesn't matter. They all got their meanings. They all got their values. I'm trying my hardest to tell this story as best as I can. At the end of the day, this is the most valuable sneaker in my collection. Everyone lived from the car accident. There was a car accident in the same exact spot. Months after ours, and everyone passed away from the accident. Similar, same exact accident. I'm thankful for everybody that has been with me along this process, that know about my story, that remember that day. So many people calling me, showing up at my parents' house, making sure I was okay through my recovery process. All my friends and family, I appreciate y'all. Y'all know that. And I try to tell everybody as much as I can. I try to tell y'all. So, I'm sorry. This is me. This is who I am. I love shoes. Yes. But I love my family. And I love them being here for me. And taking care of me. And making sure that I got both of my shoes back. Because one of them could have been missing. And the story wouldn't have been as sweet. So, I'm just... This is it. If you guys want to hear more about the story, the recovery process, my mental, my physical health, all of it, let me know. I was in a very, very bad place and I made it through. I couldn't read or write. I couldn't write a sentence. They wanted me to try to finish college right after the accident and I was in the hospital. I couldn't even complete a whole sentence, let alone write a paragraph. I was struggling. I was struggling. I was definitely struggling. I went through a lot of phases. When people say, oh, they don't know about why I sold so many shoes. Why I sold so many shoes, not just for the houses. There was times where I sold the shoes because I didn't want to care about anything anymore. But the shoes, the shoes was something that I was I liked. It was fun. I made money from it. It was a it was literally my hobby turned into my hustle just like the program that i have it's the hobby to hustle it's what all came through me this is me this is all me i love this stuff i have a great time i don't know what else to say at this point i feel like we're getting to the end of the video i gotta clean myself up and get right y'all know i'm happy i'm thankful you say i bring you guys so much joy in these videos because i have so much fun doing this stuff Every year, I want to make a video about this. May 28th. Let me speak on it real quick. Also, another shoe that I love. Rose Red, to me. I call them Rose Red because my grandma. She's my motivation. This is a whole nother story right here. But the reason why I say that is because May 28th is on the back of this shoe as well. And after I recovered from the car accident, this was a pair of shoes that I wore every single day to be comfortable in my recovery and represent the day. And me and the other guy that got in the car accident <laughs> that had the bad brain injury and everything, he lived and he made it through. And we worked hard together, me and him. We motivated each other. And we both had a pair of shoes just like this. We both made a pair with the May 28 on the back and we wore them every day together when we reunited. So. This is a whole nother story. I'll get into this one later and hopefully I can get him on the channel. If he comes on the channel, it would be dope to tell this story. If you guys wanna see that, drop a comment down below. I'll try to get a story for you guys about us and him and our recovery and our mental health and everything. I'm thankful, I appreciate it. May 28th is like my birthday all over again. It's a day that I celebrate life. It's a day that I say thank you. Today is that day I made sure I wanted to post this video today so this is me my name is dj <laughs> oh man oh this is great this is great i said i was gonna do this i, I told him i'm gonna do this i'm giving y'all me this is me so my name is dj i'm signing out i got to go i'm gone peace <laughs>
Oh, shit. Snotty nose boy. I did it. I did it.